Welcome guys. Today I have something a little different for you and that is about basically brain hacking through the power of scent. Okay. Welcome back to Sense with Benefits. Today we're talking about other types of benefits, uh, not just how to get compliments and all these types of things that we usually discuss on this channel. I want to talk to you about really unlocking your cognitive potential through scent. So in order for you to get into the mood here, I want you to imagine a world where you could boost your memory, sharpen your focus and enter a state of flow, um, all with just a simple inhale. Okay. Now this isn't science fiction. It's the cutting edge of olfactory neuroscience and brain hacking essentially. As someone who's worked in the fragrance industry for a couple of years, I've long been fascinated by the power of scent, mostly on an emotional level and really how addictive it is for all the frag heads here. Okay, I'm sure you know it as well. It wasn't until I dove deep into the research that I realized we're sitting on a gold mine of potentially cognitive enhancing abilities right under our noses, so to say, no pun intended. So that's why today, we're going to explore how you can leverage your olfactory system to unlock new levels of brain performance. Whether you're a seasoned biohacker and you've been doing these types of things or just starting your journey into the cognitive enhancement route, you'll walk away with a practical science-backed toolbox of strategies essentially to optimize your mental capabilities through the power of your nose, the power of scent. But let's start with the basics, your brain's secret superhighway, which is also the olfactory system. Let's start here with a mind blowing fact. Your sense of smell has basically some kind of VIP pass straight to your brain's emotional and memory centers. Unlike other senses that take a more indirect route, the olfactory information has a direct line to key areas of your brain, including the hippocampus, amygdala and prefrontal cortex. I'll talk about them in a second and what they all each do. Basically, this unique neuroanatomy is why a whiff of cinnamon might instantly transport you to your grandmother's kitchen or why the scent of pine can evoke a vivid memory of your childhood camping trips. Okay, but here is where it gets really interesting for us brain hackers. Okay, if I may call myself like this, tell me if you've done any brain hacking of yourself in the comments below. I would love to know who I'm speaking to. But this direct connection that I just described isn't just about nostalgia. It's a potential tool for cognitive enhancement. Consider the fascinating aspect of our sense of smell. The number of odors humans can recognize is still debated and there are some wild estimations ranging between thousands to potentially trillions of different scents that we could technically recognize. Some studies suggest that certain scents may improve memory recall. Research also indicates that certain fragrances may enhance some cognitive functions, including problem solving abilities. And then other studies suggest that certain scents may have positive effects on learning. This whole field is being researched right now as we speak. So it's really kind of exciting because we're right in the middle of it. It's not like we just started talking about it, but there is growing research in that field. So let's talk about the science behind scent and cognition, shall we? To best understand how we can potentially leverage the system. Let's talk about the mechanics first. How does it work? When you inhale a scent molecule, it binds to specialized olfactory receptors in your nasal cavity. That's like uh, right there. Fun fact here is actually that, like I said, it has this VIP pass and it's a literal VIP route essentially where your skull basically is being there. Those pathways goes directly from the area of your brain through your skull to this cavity that I just described. Okay. Um, and once this molecule binds with these receptors, it triggers a cascade of neural activity that reaches the olfactory bulb, which is on the other side. Okay. So that's basically your brain's scent processing center, if you want to call it that. From there, the signal spreads to other brain regions. And the ones that I mentioned before, before which is the hippocampus, which is crucial for memory formation and spatial navigation. 
Then we mentioned the prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for executive functions like decision making, focus and impulse control. And uh, the amygdala, which is involved in emotional processing uh, and memory consolidation. This widespread activation is why sense can have such a diverse effect on your cognitive function. But here's the kicker. Our brains use this uh, sophisticated coding strategy to identify and differentiate between thousands of orders. The human genome contains of approximately 400 functional genes for um, olfactory receptors, allowing us to recognize a vast array of sense. It's like having a limited alphabet as we do, but being able to write an infinite amount of stories. Now that we understand the mechanics, let's talk about how we might be able to leverage this system for our own benefit. Enter olfactory training, the cognitive equivalent to hitting the gym, but for your nose and your brain at the same time. Some research suggests that exposure to various sense may have positive effects on learning and memory in older adults, especially active engagement with sense through practices like mindful smelling exercises might amplify these benefits. Think of it as yoga for your olfactory system, potentially stretching and strengthening those neural pathways. Here's a simple olfactory training protocol that you could start with. First, choose, let's say, four distinct scents, for example, lemon, rose, eucalyptus and clove, which is what I would go with, and then spend 30 seconds actively smelling each scent. Do that twice a day. While you're doing this, I want you to focus intently on the scent, trying to discern different nodes or characteristics. Rotate then your scent selection every 12 weeks or so to challenge your system and to, to keep it fresh, okay? This is how you train your olfactory system and this is how you enhance the mechanism of consciously recognizing certain scents. Based on current research, here are some interesting candidates when it comes to actual scents, okay? We just mentioned four earlier, but now we're gonna go through a couple more. First up, we got peppermint. This is the so-called uh, cognitive multi-tool. Some studies suggest that peppermint scent can improve performance on administrative tasks, for example, and it also may enhance the alertness and focus. Second, let's talk about rosemary. That's what I call the memory booster. It may improve prospective memory. That means remembering to do things in the future. It also contains compounds that may have beneficial effects on brain health, but there's still some more research that needs to be done in order to confirm its specific impact on nerve growth and uh, brain plasticity. Then the next scent I want you to think about is lemon, the concentration enhancer. Some studies suggest that citrus scent like lemon may actually have positive effects on cognitive performance. It also may improve your mood and reduce stress. Fourth, we got lavender. This is the stress buster. It has been shown to have calming effects. I'm sure you've heard that before. Some research suggests that it may interact with the GABA receptors, but more studies still need to be done to be really fully understand this mechanism of that action. Then another one that we talked about is cinnamon, which is the processing powerhouse. Cinnamon may have positive effects on insulin sensitivity, which could potentially support overall health including brain health. And then the next one is Jasmine. That is what I call the creativity booster because some aromatherapy practices suggest that Jasmine may have stimulating effects. So how can you use this type of toolkit? First, I want you to create a personalized focus blend with two to three cents of those that we just discussed, or maybe you can find some more. Then use individual scents for specific cognitive tasks. For example, rosemary for memory intensive work. Experiment with different application methods, maybe diffusers, essential oil rollers, or scented candles if you find some. This is how I would basically start using that. Now let's talk about hacking flow state through scent. This is the holy grail of cognitive performance, flow state. 
You know, that mental state when you're fully immersed in a task, time seems to fly and your performance is at its peak. For me, honestly, I'm sorry, video games had that effect for a while. Also creating things in 3D or photography or surfing actually. And the, believe it or not, the most, the most random flow state that I've got was flying FPV drones. Those you put on those goggles and then you fly it crazy. If you want to get into flow state and you're not frustrated fast because it takes a little bit of time to kind of figure it out, try out FPV flying because it's going to blow your mind. Uh, sorry to going off tangent, but you know, that's that's let, let me know what flow state means for you in the comments below. I would love to hear that, by the way. So while research is still ongoing, as in many of these fields, some practitioners suggest that certain scents might help trigger and maintain this coveted state of mind, okay, flow state. And by creating a unique olfactory environment associated with deep work and focus, you can certainly train your brain to enter flow state more easily over time. And here's how you can maybe create a flow state scent, or at least that's how I would do it. Choose a unique blend of scents like peppermint for alertness, cedar wood for focus, and maybe a hint of citrus for positivity. Use this blend consistently during your most productive periods, then practice mindfulness techniques while inhaling your flow state scents. And over time, your brain may associate this scent with peak performance, potentially making it easier to enter flow state. You know, that's how I would go about it and give it a try. There are many factors that go into getting into flow state and just being more productive, like keeping a clean environment, getting sleep, drinking water, exercising, all these types of things. But if you want to be even more mindful about creating this state of mind, I think the olfactory system is a real hack and it, it could be a good cheat to get to it faster, a good shortcut in that sense. Now let's talk about advanced olfactory hacking techniques. Some of them might be a little bit out there. I'll list them in the description below in a greater detail so you can read up on it because I'm not going to cover all of it because it'll be too much. But for those ready to take their olfactory exploration to the next level, consider these advanced techniques. First up, something I call scent cycling. Similar to microdosing, rotate different scents throughout your day to maintain cognitive stimulation without olfactory fatigue. You know, at some point, our noses just get really used to certain scents and then we can't actually perceive them anymore. And that's where this technique goes into because it essentially gives your nose something new to get used to all the time. Second, try olfactory entrainment. Pair specific scents with different activities to create a powerful state changing trigger. And that's kind of like what we talked about before when it gets into getting into flow state specifically. But what if you want to use different activities to get into different states? Okay, that could be something for resting or sleeping, for example, or maybe food. Then the third technique is chronobiological scenting. And we kind of touched on that a moment ago. And that's where you align your scent exposure with your circadian rhythm. Use stimulating scents in the morning and calming scents in the evening to basically amplify waking up in the morning and then going to bed in the evening. Fourth, nootropic synergy. That's very advanced and most of us will never do that, but essentially that means combining olfactory stimulation with nootropic supplements. Maybe somebody uh, is trying a brain supplement. Okay, there are some out there that lets you concentrate more. You want to pair that with a scent that also helps you achieve better focus, as we discussed before. Then you can do that. But remember, always consult with a healthcare professional before starting any supplement regimen, but that should be obvious. I'm still going to mention it here for liability purposes. And then the fifth point is retro nasal olfactory or ol olfaction training. And I want you in this with this one, I want you to explore the intersection of taste and smell by 
practicing mindful eating with aromatic foods. Some of you already know the nose is actually what we taste with. And I want you to be more mindful about it. Again, I'll list all the hows and whys in the description below so you can read up on that. But here's the thing, okay? There's also a dark side to all of this. So let's talk about what to avoid. It's not all roses in the world of olfactory exploration. Just as a certain sense may have positive effects as we discussed, others can potentially hinder our cognitive abilities. Be aware of things like strong or overpowering fragrances that can be distracting, unpleasant odors that trigger stress responses, and maybe even synthetic fragrances or components that are found in common products, like in household products. You gotta be careful with this stuff, uh, not just from a chemical and health perspective, but also the pro I, I see one problem with this whole field. Um, it's, it's hard to create a one size fits all solution because every one of us experiences scents throughout our life in different situations. So that's what makes it a little bit difficult to give advice on this as a whole. But I just want to kind of wake your interest in this whole field. Some studies have reported uh, that significant percentage of adults actually experience negative reactions to synthetic fragrances. But the exact percentage, obviously, like I said, varies across studies and populations. And some people also report that ex uh, they're experiencing neurological symptoms in response to synthetic fragrances. That's pretty, you know, that's pretty severe. But remember, not everything that's natural is automatically good for you either. The key is to be mindful of your personal responses to different scents and to opt for high quality essential oils when possible. So where is all this going? What's the future of olfactory enhanced cognition, if you will? As we look to the future, the potential application of olfactory based cognitive enhancements are exciting, in my opinion. And I'm actually definitely going to double down on this topic and see how I can be more involved. Think of personalized scent profiles based on individual preferences and responses, smart diffusers that adjust scent output based on time of day or activity, olfactory enhanced virtual reality for immersive learning experiences. If you remember, uh, I actually went around the VR uh, worlds a couple years ago and was asking people how they smell, what they what's their favorite fragrance and all that it was super fun to get their virtual eyes lit up with that question because it was so un unexpected. And generally, I'm excited to see that there's further research into scent based therapies for various cognitive conditions. And that research also includes things like the role of the olfactory, olfactory receptors found outside the nose. Yes, they exist. We have receptors outside the nose. Uh, how olfactory stem cells might be used uh, in future therapies and the potential of tailored odorants for specific cognitive effects. But uh, to be honest with you, there's actually also uh, on the mechanics part, people are still not 100% sure how the olfactory system actually recognizes the molecules. There's quantum based theories. There's just more traditional molecule based theories. It's super interesting. If that's something interesting to you, I definitely recommend you read up on some of those uh, sources that are linked below as well. As we come to an end, um, I want you to take a deep breath again. <sighs> Generally a good idea, but this time I want you to imagine the possibilities that each inhale brings the potential to sharpen your focus, enhance your memory and unlock cognitive abilities you never even knew you had all through the simple act of breathing. I think that the exploration of olfactory effects on cognition is just beginning and the implications I got to tell you are kind of intriguing because by understanding and potentially harnessing the power of scent, we're not just exploring new territories in cognitive science. We're paving the way for a future where our brains might perform in ways we once thought impossible. Your nose isn't just for smelling the roses, okay? It could be the gateway to cognitive enhancement. The question is, are you ready to breathe in your full potential? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. 
and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.